Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton from My House to Yours. Welcome to EMS at Sea Level. Today, I am joined by BH from the Flexiversa Group. BH, so let's just start with a quick introduction to yourself and to Flexiversa. Yeah, hi. Um, good morning, Phil. Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me. Uh, I'm BH Cheng. I'm the, the group CEO of Flexiversa Group. Um, so we started out in the late 90s as a fabricator of electromechanical components. Um, in 2009, we have acquired acoustic manufacturer. And um, um, since then, um, my team and I have successfully transformed it to uh, one of the fast growing and vertically integrated contract manufacturer um, in the region. Yeah, I think that's really impressive. And I, you know, I want to touch on vertical integration uh, as a particular topic. But you started on the component side. And the second right. thing you added was acoustics. And that has some very interesting disciplines in, you know, I don't hear many EMS um, manufacturers talk about woodwork, for example, and that's something you have expertise in. How did that come about? Um, so, um during that time as a, a, a fabricator of uh, electromechanical components, uh, I was telling my partners in order to grow, um, you we really have to get in this space. And so in 2009, and as you know, there was the um, there was a financial crisis in the layman mm -hmm. days. So I acquired this um, acoustic manufacturer that's in distress. And uh, because of that, you know, um, through that acquisition itself, as you know, um, sound resonates, the, the music resonates the best with wood. So um, yeah. definitely there's a, a woodworking or woodcrafting um, um, department. And mm. um, during that acquisition, or rather after the acquisition in, in 2012, I've also acquired the um, acoustic uh, expertise through the acquisition of uh, transducers facilities. Um, I, I bought it from a, 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 a Japan listed company as well. Um, the vertical integration is not just um, restricted to these two capabilities. Mm. In fact, um, um, other um precision engineering capabilities uh we have um, um as a whole but um to answer your question um we we have the um the expertise of the woodworking and mm. i actually look at it and always ask myself what are the needs of the clients you know how do we address yeah. this need so um from a very um uh highly craftsmanship um perspective i've i've moved into um uh, Automation. I've I've gotten um, six axis spray facilities, for example. Um, that's mm. a start to to remove the craftsmanship component and to also um, inbuild more quality and consistency yeah. um, in in the products itself. And that actually have uh, uh, that actually has um, gained a lot of um, so called confidence and good clients as well. And right now we are doing one of the biggest names in especially in the the pro segment for cinematic mm. products for theaters. Um, even for stadiums as well. Um, on top of that, um, we also look at how we can extend this product offering um, to um, other clients as well, because uh, it's the same principles, the same machines. You are looking at the same mm. routing machine, you're using the CNC machines. And so um, during this period, it, um, we managed to um, get um, a, a US-based uh, furniture making company you know, to, to, to come in as well. And uh, we have also forayed into... Um, um, using these capabilities, we have also forayed into doing uh, PRR boards for for solar panels, and um, we are now working with one of uh, one of the the leading names in this space. And so this is for renewable energy as well. So it's more like yeah. a product extension, and yeah. also helping in terms of vertical uh, integration. Um, when it yeah. comes to the acoustic acoustic part, um, we look into we we of course we we have a certain level of uh, robotic. Um, uh, uh, solutions and that is in line with industry 4.0 but apart from that I, I think we also calibrate our software and firmware um, requirements with our clients so that we can work very closely with them and uh, so-called because each client have their own specific sound DNA so mm. by addressing this um, again like I said it, it's a barrier of entry it's, a, it's also something through engagement you can win yeah. the customers over and now we can combine sound with many IoT devices and, and wearables as well. So that's, that's how the vertical integration and, and also expanding the product capabilities that we have uh, is yeah. helping our, our group to grow. 
Yeah, no, it's really fascinating. And I think it's that fabulous combination of opportunist and strategic. And you can, you, you know, you can take an opportunity, you can capitalize on it, and then you can build strategy around it and, and kind of land and expand, if you like, in those particular segments. You're in five different countries, um, multiple sites, just so people understand, give me an idea of the scale of um, FVG in terms of maybe the number of people. Um, we have 1,300 people. Um, mm. Gone are the days that I pride myself for having really huge number of uh, employees uh, mm. under our belt because um, we are relentlessly going to automation. Um, yeah. We are trying to, to make sure that we move away from the labor-intensive landscape to more um, 4.0, more automated mm. um, processes, um, uh, driven processes as well. Um, yeah, so the, the presence, um, the, the manufacturing footprint that we have regionally um, does help, you know, in, in a great way to give the customers comfort in terms of, uh, first of all, risk mitigation. So mm -hmm. at least at any point in time, you are not bounded by a certain, um, you, it's yeah. not, you're not bounded by geographical boundaries, right? And, and mm. that's, that's one. Number two, it's also in terms of um, the supply chain that we have. And this is something we can leverage on. Um, having the presence in, in these countries also show that we are scalable. Um, mm. And that's what clients want. Um, if you are doing one of the, the biggest names in the IoT, the medical instrumentation, um, yeah. the automation, and, and we have even foray into the military landscape as well, what they really want is to make sure that your, your, your facilities are there and you are, you know, um, in terms of size, you are significant enough to support yeah. their requirements. Yeah. 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 And it gives you, you know, it gives you something that's more robust, more secure. And as you say, if there is a supply chain disruption in in one country, you're in four other countries. So you can uh, you can yes. deal with that. One of the yeah. things that I think has been really interesting in Asia, I mean, I, I've been looking at this industry for uh, for decades. And I remember, you know, the kind of time of the Asian Tigers and then the Asian Tiger Cubs. And then the last 20 years was all about stuff moving to China. And now things yeah. seem to be all about decoupling from China and perhaps diversifying that risk. How has that impacted your customers and what have they what have they kind of been asking from you as a result of that desire to maybe either move to a China plus one or to decouple a bit a bit more with China? Yeah, I, I think um the your question, it's it's really two pronged. Uh, first of all, um, in terms of the the tiger cubs, as you mentioned, um, mm. I I think uh, a lot of uh, articles will, will you know demonstrate that by 2030, more than half of the world's economic growth will be driven by Asia. Um, I, and of which I I think the five uh, fastest growing would be the the Asia cubs, right, or rather the tiger cubs, um, mm. with the exception of Thailand. Uh, we are in the rest of the, the countries, um, namely Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, the Philippines, Vietnam. So we are in all these countries as well and also experiencing and enjoying that, that uh, process of acquiring new customers for it, the local and, and the international players as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a, a very good uh, way to grow and also mm. to gain you know, good clients, um, because some of these this clients, I mean, if, if, if you miss the window, it, it's quite difficult to get into the, the supply yeah. um, vendor list as well. Um, coming back to the decoupling and uh, China plus one strategy, um, without a shadow of a doubt, whatever is happening right now, the geopolitical uh, challenges that we're facing, the US um, and China trade tensions, um, it's definitely benefiting us um, mm. from this part of the world. Um, especially um, if you ask me, um, Malaysia, first of all, the proximity to Singapore, which is a traveling hub, you know, our facility is just eight minutes away from, from the causeway. Um, mm. And we also have another a plant in a Penang site, which is supporting a lot of manufacturing activities in the North Malaysia as well. Um, and another thing, it's the Malaysia itself, the, 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 the Malaysia ringgit versus the US dollar um, gives it a very competitive uh, manufacturing landscape. The, mm. the corporate governance, the infrastructure, uh, uh, the clarity in terms of uh, what you have, what you can do, and what you can't, and it's it's uh, you don't you don't have also the the administrative bureaucracies of all in uh, what a lot of these companies are facing in China. Um, mm. Yeah, the the downside of it is that um, of course um, um, 
high cost notwithstanding, the ancillary um, industry and the supporting industry in China is still undoubtedly the best in the world mm, to support yeah. the manufacturing. But if, if we can work together with our, our supply chain and, and if we can work together and find a collaborative uh, uh, approach towards solving these problems for customer, I think it's definitely a, a, a win-win situation. And yeah. again, you know, I, I can't stress this enough with the vertical integrations that we have right now, um, we, we can go back to the customer and say that, you know, instead of doing this, we're doing all this for you. So we are offering not just the plastics, we are offering the elastomeric solutions, we are offering the, the wire harnesses. We are also, mm. you know, looking into um, providing, you know, die casting facilities as well. So with this uh, as a whole, I think um, it's, um, it's a really a good plus point and attractive and a competitive advantage for LPG. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. You know, when I, when I look at the situation with OEMs trying to take complexity out of the supply chain, one of the ways they can do that is to use someone like FVG that has a broad scope of of plants, but also a broad scope of skills. So that vertical integration actually by by its own nature makes their makes their supply chain less complex and 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 more robust as a result. So yeah, I think that makes sense. I think the um the fact that Vietnam has a very long um a long border with with China makes it attractive and and helps ease those supply chain issues. And there's no doubt that China kicked the door open with low cost labor and has kept the door open with fantastic infrastructure and supply chain. And um, yeah, you can't, you, it's just impossible for most of the, uh, most of the world to compete with scale and supply chain of, of, of that nature. So it has to be part of, part of an ongoing strategy. We're hearing lots about shortages in two areas. One, component shortages. Some of the news is that that's easing a little bit. But also, we're hearing a lot about talent shortages. Speak to me about both of those. Um, the IC shortages is not going to go away anytime soon. Um, what what we do, um, if you read the article that uh, we have written, the we are in this together. What we do is mm. to work very closely with with our our clients to see how uh, we can um, open the architecture, for example, um, not to be you know. Um, to be um, a victim of a proprietary network or a, or, or a, a processor or yeah. a component. And that's that's what we do. Um, and alongside, of course, our supply chain will work relentlessly to try to see if they can secure um, the cheapest purchase price variant so that to ensure that we, we still can have the goods um, for our clients, you know, in the, in the market in a, in a timely manner. Um, mm. Yeah, that's that's one area that we we really work with 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 our customers as well. And and for the new SKUs, um, we are also working. You know, apart from those that have been appointed, right? We we will have our supply chain come back to them and say, hey, you know, instead of using this, why don't you consider this this um this component from uh, uh, from another manufacturer yeah. because um, the one that you have proposed takes a 52 weeks NCNR but what we have some it, it's somewhat cheaper and also readily, re, uh, readily available so these are areas that we work with with um, um, our, our good clients to ensure that you know we try to you know at least you know um, elevate some of the or, or reduce some of these um, IC shortages right. uh, challenges yeah. that, that we are facing in terms of talents, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, uh, this is something that it's um, it's always a, a continuous challenge, if you will, mm. um, where we are in, in many parts of, of, of the world. I mean, I'm talking about Asia. Um, there are always people um, or always companies offering higher salaries. Um, I think um, I am, I'm proud to say that the, the culture that I have in LBG um, uh, allows us to really... Um, you know, retain talent. How how do we mm. go about doing so? It's because, uh, first of all, um, we always have this ardent belief that if we can train in house, we'll try to train in house to give our employees that opportunity as well. Um, our our scorecard for each individual um um uh, person and each individual manager actually allows us to have that transparency to see where the gaps are uh, have where are the gaps and how are they being addressed at the same time we talk about you know career advancement career development 
And and why do I say this? Because I I always mention this that you know guys you you the more the amount of time you spend in the office is definitely much more than the amount of time you spend at home with your loved ones, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that this is worthwhile. So continuous training, continuous engagement, continuously um talking to them in terms of where they are, the gaps, you know, and sending them for training. And, and, and these are areas that, you know, make you, you'll be able to, to, to retain the talents and not just that um, we, we also go about, you know, empowering them to make decisions. Sometimes it might not be exactly the best decision, but at least you learn from it. You no, know, yeah. so next time you will make the same mistake twice. Um, we also provide a lot of cross-functional um opportunities, it means that you're not just restricted to one, and it's one of those that will help you to to find you know your 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 talent and and find your your cause if you will. Yeah. Um, for example, sometimes you you might be in purchasing, but you might have a neck or or a a a, a, a skill right that allows you to go into procurement so these are yeah. areas that we work together and sometimes you'll be better off as as a, a, a bd as opposed to a program manager so yeah. we, we talk to our, our, our staff we engage them and we make them accountable and take ownership and empower them i, I think that's that's one area that i'm, I'm proud to say mm. that it's helping us to retain talents in in LVG. Yeah, I think that's hugely important. Just going back to the component shortages, the fact that you've got amongst your vertical integration, you've got design in there has, has really allowed you to help customers to get to get through that challenging time and to and to deal with that. And going back to talent, you just really need to be a brand now that people want to work for. It's not as simple as just here's it, you know. Here's, here's a job will uh, will take anybody. You really need, it's a competitive landscape and, you know, you have to compete for customers, but you have to compete for, you have to compete for operators and staff and executives as well. So, um, yeah, fundamentally important. BH, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Great to learn a bit more about FVG. Look forward to um, talking to you again in the future, but in the meantime, thank you so much. Once again, thank you so much for having me.